Stakeholders of Cross River Southern Senatorial District have demanded that the 2023 governorship position be zoned to the district in accordance with the Kalaba Ugoja Accord. Now, the accord was signed by political leaders in the state in 1980. Well, joining us to discuss this is a former commissioner uh, from Cross River State, Professor Eyo Itam Nyong. And uh, we're also being joined by communications and crisis management strategist, Emana Ambrose Amawe. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Um, well, I'm going to start with you, Professor, if you can hear me. Um, the question is, of I'm course, you. yes, you can hear me. Great. Uh, the first question, obviously, is uh, about the Ogoja Kalaba Accord in 1980. Um, we hear that it was signed, but then in terms of the agreement between leaders uh, of these different zones in Cross River State on rotation of the Office of Governor, uh, was there any document that was signed or was it just a gentleman's agreement? Well, I don't think people are arguing about implementing a Calabar Ogoja Accord because, um, as you may have heard before now, that accord was signed at the time when there were two uh, senatorial districts like Ogoja and Calabar. And that Calabar included part of Akwaibom State now. But people are relying on the spirit, the spirit of that accord the content of that accord that addresses the issue of equity, unity, and um, togetherness, you know, to achieve progress. I think that is what people are relying on, not, not to implement the accord as, as it were uh, from way back in 1980. Well, that, that, but then, of course, the, the people who are uh, arguing uh, about this particular spirit of the accord is uh, they're all saying that it has rotated and any zone can determine or can be the next zone that would produce the governor. Why should it be the south? Being that everybody has taken their turn, so we shouldn't go back to the south because this is where it started from. Um, so if everybody has done their turn, then why can't we just toss a coin and say, wherever it goes, let's pick a governor from there? Well, let me tell you my, my mindset. Um, it's actually a party decision. The political parties are the ones that fill candidates for election. The political parties will look at the best chance of winning the election. Okay? Now, if you ignore a certain senatorial district, one party ignores that senatorial district, and another party comes for it. Um, out of sentiment, the people of that senatorial district will stand by the party that has come for them. And when you look at the southern senatorial district, the southern senatorial district is made up of seven local governments out of a total of 18 local governments in the state. It has the highest number of local governments. It has the highest uh, voting population in the state. It, it, most of it is cosmopolitan and a lot of uh, um, non, real non-indigenous living in this part of the state. And um, they enjoy the hospitality of the, the host communities and they will also stand by them. So it's left for the party to take the decision. So what um, the Southern um, uh, Coalition are doing is just to sensitize the people and the political parties to see the reason why they should allow the governorship to come to the South. Being that the South kicked off this process, it went from South to Central, from Central to North, and by all conditions, it should come back to the South. The South has been out of power for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And that is the maximum. If you do the rotation process, that will be the maximum number of years any senatorial district will be kept out of power. So for the sake of equity and fairness, as, con as contained in the Ogoja Calabar Court that you mentioned, that is how it should be. Okay, we're being joined by uh, Emana. Emana is a member of the Cross River South Coalition and um, uh, she was obviously part of that town hall meeting that happened yesterday. Emana, it, it's very interesting that we're talking about this zoning system and um, why it should go to, you know, the south. 
Um, but how does zoning ensure good governance and effective delivery of democratic dividends? Because, I mean, I, I, and I'm not in any way trying to um, talk down on any governor or anyone who's ruled the, the state, but um, we've had people from certain zones that have not necessarily delivered in terms of um, the dividends of good governance. So how has zoning helped? Okay, so I'd like to, I'd like to state that um, zoning meritocracy for the people who are, who are arguing um, for merit uh, the cause of meritocracy are not mutually exclusive because um, merit, you know, there is, no, uh, there is no region or there is no senatorial district in Cross River State, for instance, that um, holds the monopoly of knowledge. Every senatorial district, every zone has uh, people of merit and can also posit people who can get the job done, people who are suitably qualified. So it's, um, it's zoning and meritocracy can, are not mutually exclusive. The Cross River de Declaration is agitating for or advocating that the governorship be zoned back to the south, just as um, the other um, guests on the program has said. There's a lot of feedback, so I'm actually struggling to. Um, I'm actually struggling to. Um... Uh, Emma, if you can hear me, uh, I know that your connection is really bad. But quickly, we know that we have two major political parties in Cross River State as we speak. Um, at, as at the time where the zoning, you know, where the PDP, PDP used to be the dominant party, but of course we know what happened. The governor had moved to the APC, making it now the, power, the party in power. Um, um, the professor had said that this is a political party issue, and so the political parties are to decide um, if they're going to zone or not. Now, we know that the APC in itself um, goes, goes mo mostly with consensus candidates as opposed to the PDP that holds zoning as sacred. So uh, with all the push and shove, of course, that the, the southern part of the state is doing, um, what if the APC decides not to go with the zoning formula and maybe just the PDP? Where does that leave the people who are in the south of the, the state that belong to that party? Okay, so Marianne, let me quickly let me let me quickly state that both political parties, the two major political parties in Cross River State, the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress, recognize the principle of zoning and rotation. The PDP in its um, constitution, Article Seven, Subsection Three C provides for rotation and zoning of party and public elective offices. Yes. And for the All Progressives Congress, their constitution in um, Article 25E also provides for the principle of federal character and rotation mm -hmm. in nomination for election or appointment. So the case here now is not that um, either of the two parties do not recognize zoning because you said um, the All Progressive candidate, uh, Congress goes with consensus candidates. You know, that's not um, entirely true because each election has its own unique um, and, um, antecedents or mm -hmm. each election and each political party could choose mm -hmm. to go by a, 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 a different pattern as it suits them mm -hmm. at that time. But the constitution of those parties recognize zoning and rotation. So what falls on the parties is to produce candidates who are suitably qualified from the south because um the principle of eight has actually gone round and for those who are saying yes. it's gone round the three senatorial districts and um it can start anywhere just as professor nyong said it, it should not start anywhere for the um for for fairness equity and justice sake it should go back to the south where it all started mm -hmm. so that every senatorial district can lay claim to and join the dividends of democracy and development because like i was saying before you went on break yeah. there is no senatorial district that holds the monopoly of knowledge every senatorial district just like the south can produce people of merit 
who can sit in that governorship um, position. So that's the argument for the Calabar Declaration, and that's what um, the advocacy is all about. Great. Um, because we're almost out of time, Professor, I'll just uh, let you have the last word. In this issue now, because um, what I meant, and I'm, I'm grateful that Emana was able to set that straight, uh, what I meant was that, of course, parties have a right to choose whatever way they want to go, whether it's a consensus party uh, candidate or they decide to go with the zoning formula. Uh, but what if this whole zoning thing or the zoning formula is jettisoned? I mean, uh, will, will that affect, you know, the, the, the Southern Senatorial District uh, negatively? You mean if it's jettisoned by both parties or by all parties? Yes. Well, if it's jettisoned by all, all parties, um, yes, it will affect the South because um, we've been out of power for 16 years. We're going to add another eight years of out of power to us. And this is the senatorial district that is hosting the capital city of this state and um, handling the bulk of the population of the state and the highest uh, voting strength. So if you deny the South, this opportunity by ignoring this rotation formula, then you are just uh, disadvantaging the South. Hmm. Well, let's hope that something comes out of this, uh, especially with the Calabar Declaration. But unfortunately, we're out of time. I want to say thank you, Professor Young, for being part of the conversation. Emana Awe, thank you so much for being here. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be saying our goodbyes. According to what I read online, it is free and fair. So, though APC and PDP are like um, complaining that they will go to the court in order to contest the the the, uh, the results of the election, but to me it is free and fair because it is the person that the people wanted that won the election. Okay, if you look at the election, I don't think there is nothing free and fair about the election because looking at the way APC has been conducting election in this country. It's nothing to be right home about. APC is so, you know, they don't even know what to do. If you give them common food, they will not be able to eat it properly. Not to talk of conducting just a common election. So you can see all sorts of things. Why would they be having a conclusive election just for one state? So just imagine if they want to conduct election for the whole country. That means we are in a mess in this country. That's just my own view. Yeah, actually, the Anambra State Conduct election was... To me, my own opinion that it was okay because um, actually I was rooting for Abga to win. I was so grateful for the people coming out to vote because I thought that based on the security issue and problem here and then, so I thought that nobody would come out. But in mass, the number of voters that come out, I was so impressed. That is to show that this Nigeria, if we find the right people on this seat, people will come out to support the person. We want to thank you for being part of the conversation tonight. We hope you enjoyed every bit of it. I am Mariana. Conte. See you tomorrow.